want to talk to you about uh, just being comfortable where you're at right now and just chilling a little. Now, I, I was uh, thinking today about this church in particular, this building. This was called Life Christian Center. And on this pew, when they took out all the pews, some of you were here when they, uh, when they built this church. Raise your hand if you were here and you gave money to the other church. Then you came to our church and then I asked you for more money to buy the church again. I remember Tim, I told you, I said, you bought a church once? You need to help me buy it again. And he did, his whole family. But this was a very special church uh, in the day, this building. This, this a guy named Rick and Donna Shelton and um, they just gave their life to building the church. And th- these were the pews, the original pews that were in it. And when they were taking all the pews out because they needed to go away, because they wore out, I kept two. I would never let him get rid of this one. And there was a little short one that now is in Pastor Rick and Donna's house. But everybody's throwing them away. And I said, no, 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 not those two. Not, not, not that one. Because that one is the one that has the special little thing here where Joyce Meyer cut her teeth. It's called Life Christian Center. It was life in the word. Grew out of here. And Pastor Rick hired her. She had an attitude. He fired her. She came back, repented. She had an attitude again. He fired her again. It's true stories. But eventually, she was able to launch all around the world from this, this physical, this one, this pew. And, and I think about Rick and Donna and Rodney Howard Brown when he first came to America and they did 17 weeks of revival and twice a day in this building, um, God chose to visit them for 17 weeks. And I I wasn't the pastor. Our church was across town. My dad had a little church and I saw everything that was going on. It was amazing. It was a move of God. And at my dad's church, we were just having church as usual, but God just chose at 13,001, this location, to show up. Don't ask me why. He just did. It was a thing. It's historic. So Perry Stone and Hal Lindsey and you name it. They're all these, the famous preachers of yesterday and some of today all set on this seat. And I, I, I don't like worship the seat. In fact, I didn't know where it was. I asked Billy where it was. And Billy said they had chucked it up at the top of up there. And he's like, that was a really bad idea because it was... Really hard to get down. <laughs> but this seat. And I was thinking about how it takes a long time. Today I was texting Joyce Meyer. And um, no, she's almost 80. A hundred, 100 best-selling books globally. I think I, I had our team grab just some random videos. When she was sitting here and she got fired and her attitude was bad, hurry up, God, hurry up, God. She didn't see all the stadiums and the coliseums and the millions of people. And she didn't see all that. I mean, she's been in so many stadiums, she's sick of being in stadiums. She don't want to see one more back room of a football stadium or a soccer stadium. But yet today, I did it just for you. I texted Joyce just for one second. I want to see how long, because she, how, how many of y'all think she'd be really, really busy? This is a busy, busy woman. And I texted her, and this is how long it took her to text me back. I think they got a text there. I know they do. At 2.50, I texted her. By 2.51, she texted me back. You can take it down. One, one minute. Because she's really not busy. Really not. You can text me back in one minute. You're not busy. You're fruitful. And there's a huge difference between being busy and being fruitful. I learned that from her. And what I want to talk to you about is being in too big of a hurry that you miss what God's doing. Because you're like, oh God, when are you going to do it for me? And, oh, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't got time to talk to nobody. You ain't got time to do what God's calling you to do. I'm too busy to be this. I'm too busy to be that. I'm too busy. Uh, I really wasn't too busy today. I, I got a lot done, but I wasn't too busy. I had one or two meetings, looked at my schedule tomorrow, canceled a couple of those. Because what I'd rather do is just 
work calmly. Be able to talk to people. Find out how, how hard it was for Billy to get this down. <laughs> talk to Brandon and Billy and a bunch of guys for 10 or 15 minutes. Walked slowly through the hallway. Saw some custodian people that are volunteer special needs people. Talked to them for a little bit. I'm busy, I'm busy. I gotta preach tonight. I'm, I'm busy. No. If you're too busy, you're doing it wrong. He said, my, my, my burden's easy, light. My, my yoke's easy, my burden's light. It's not, <laughs> but when you're young, <laughs> and they, they sit here at this place, at this chair, and they cut their teeth, and then they kind of change the world. How many of y'all, I mean, whether you like Joyce Meyer or not, you'd have to agree that she definitely is historic. Raise your hands. She's historic and life changing. And, blah, blah, blah. and so what you have to be careful of is if you get too busy, you can't, you can't bridge the gap. And so there, there's this, this, this gap that has to be bridged in your ministry, in your life, in your peace. And, and when you're doing it, you don't even realize that I think that you're making history. I don't think Martin Luther King knew when he walked across that bridge that day that that picture would go down in history and whenever we do, you know, all the things we do in, you know, Black History Month or MLK Day and they always show the picture of them walking across that incredible bridge. He was just walking across a bridge that was on the schedule that day to do what he was doing. And so I think a lot of you here and in Florida, you're underestimating what God can do in your life over time. And so you underestimate what God can do if you just stick with it, slow and steady, calm, chill, because if not, you're gonna end up on medication, you're gonna end up posting things you didn't wanna post, you'll end up doing things you don't wanna do, and you could just implode your whole life in ministry because you have gotten away from the main thing and the main thing that God's called us to do is walk in peace. I've watched a lot of people take less paycheck to find something that was more in line with their purpose. And I would advise that because at the end of the trail, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. Here's the good news, you're gonna die. Hopefully not this week. Hopefully not next month, but the fact is, the Bible said it's appointed unto man once to die, and then after that, so we're gonna die. None of us get out of here alive. So let's make sure we're doing something with purpose and something that has purpose. So sometimes people think so much of themselves, they can't think of nobody else. God can't use you when all you're thinking about is you. But if you start thinking about helping other people, bridging the gap, it wasn't until Joyce, I don't know exactly how the facts on this, but I, I don't think it was until she was like 40 something until she, she was kind of like Colonel Sanders. She was late to the game. And she admits herself, I want to be careful because she's probably watching tonight because I told her. <laughs> but she admits that God had to do a whole lot of working on her, and rightfully so, because she went through a lot of stuff. By the way, if you've went through a lot of stuff in your life, been jacked around, molested, betrayed, hurt, chances are the enemy saw what God was gonna do in your life, and so the good news is there's good news, and you're gonna help people, and you're gonna make a difference. But, but you gotta find out what your purpose is, and then you've gotta stick with that purpose. And I think a lot of you guys just need to chill. <sighs> Calm down. I gotta get more likes. I, I, I gotta get more views. I, got, I gotta get more money. I gotta get more, I gotta get more, I gotta get more. You, you're gonna get crazy. You need to get more peace. Go, you know what, I'm cool, I'm good. I think I said it Sunday, I think. Maybe Saturday, um, I preached a little bit Saturday. We, we had a kind of a flow, a Holy Ghost flow Saturday, and then they went preach, and then Sunday it was like, I'm still like kind of going, 
What happened? But I said that we, we, our family went to uh, see this movie called Southern Gospel, which is not about Southern Gospel at all. I would have never named it Southern Gospel because nobody likes Southern Gospel. Like it's, it's really not a great movie name for a movie. It, this movie is unbelievable. And sitting in, in the row with us was the guy who the movie was about and the guy who produced it and directed it. And there was two people kind of crying at different points. It's a touching movie. And they don't know that the man who created and produced it is literally sitting right next to him. Of course, me wanting to brag, I gotta tell him I know him and he's right here. Come on, go with me on this and just tell him. And they were like, oh my gosh, that's him for real. They want their picture with him. They want everything about it. This is unbelievable, right? But they, the fact was, one of my point is, is they, they were sitting right next to the master and they didn't know it. And I think a lot of you right now are sitting like this close to what God wants to do in your life. And if you think about even Sunday, I told you I saw open vision and I saw a coffee cup, which thank God, God used a coffee cup. It wasn't a shot glass, it wasn't a red solo cup. Come on somebody, he used a coffee cup, praise him. Somebody ought to say amen in Florida. And so, you know, picture the faucet, the spigot's coming out, it's flowing, and it's kinda half in, just a little, maybe not even a third in. It's taking a long time to fill up. And just one adjustment, that thing would have been overflowing exceedingly abundantly. And I think some of you prophetically, I'm speaking to you right now, as we're getting ready to come into Holy Week, going into Palm Sunday. We got one more regular Sunday, then we go into Palm Sunday, then we go into Good Friday, which we all go to church on Good Friday. Or you, I really don't even want you to come to this church. And then we go to church on Easter. Okay, these are holy times and sometimes the enemy will push darkness on you because he hates this time of year. In fact, he's salivating still over that time in COVID when he shut it down. Well, we're gonna make him pay this year. Come on, somebody, we're coming back hard. We're gonna go get all our neighbors. We're gonna go to the highways and byways. We're gonna go to the trailer park. We're gonna eat to East St. Louis. Come on, somebody. We're gonna go to the crack house. We're gonna go everywhere we can. We're gonna bring everybody in this year and say, hey, try that again. I dare you. Second Kings, let's go there, chapter five, verse one. Now, Naaman, a commander of the army, so that's a busy guy. Commander, that's a big deal. The king of Syria, my gosh, commander and king. He, he was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Everybody shout, but a leper. Shout it one more time loud. What? For Florida, they can't hear it. What? what? But. He was great, but everybody's got a but. Put it up again. He was a great man of valor. He was the big dog, but he was a leper. There's always some form of leprosy. I'm speaking prophetically right now. I'm telling you, this is not a sermon. This is a word. You ought to write this down. And it's not for everybody. It's just for a couple somebodies. Sin is a type of leprosy. Disobedience is a type of leprosy. And you don't want God to say, David Crank was a good whatever pastor, a good worship leader, a good whatever preacher. He was good. But... We don't want any extra butt. Can somebody say amen? Let's share Kim Kardashian. You don't want any extra butt. I had to say that to make sure you knew it was me. So while everybody's chatting him up, how great he is, he's powerful, he's mighty, and he looks the part when he's out doing his thing, but then when he goes home and takes off his armor, he's gotta to try to take off his bandages because he's oozing. And some of you are that way. You look good on stage. You look good at work. You look good on the day. You look good, but there's just something that you're suffering behind the armor and there's some bandages there and there's some toxic spaces and places in your life. And until you go ahead and open that door and say, God, Let's talk about this. 
then you'll suffer in silence. Raise your hand if it's making sense to you. Come on, Florida, everywhere is making sense. Okay, so, so God now does something pretty cool with the 5-2, 2 Kings 5-2, it says, and the Syrians had gone out on raids and they had brought back a captive, a young girl from the land of Israel, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she was actually told, if you study it out, don't tell anybody he's a leper. We don't want anybody to know he's a leper because people run away from leprosy and he's an important man. So we, he's got leprosy, but don't tell anybody. But every night when she would go in in the morning to change the bed sheets, the bed sheets were bloody and there were sores there. And she knew that there was something wrong on the inside. This is a bridge builder. The bridge is out in their life, but God sends this woman. For you, it's this church. For you, it's a small group. For you, it is, it, hey, I'm gonna go to church now for real. You have to have somebody to say, wait a minute, I've noticed something that's not quite right. And allow God to heal you. Verse three, it says, then she said to her mistress, if, if only my master we're with the prophet who's in Samaria. Or, or if, only, you know, if only my master knew about faith church, because they believe in healing. Basically what she's saying. For he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master saying this, verse four. The girl says, hey, I, I, I'm from the land of Israel. Verse nine, for the sake of time. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elijah's house. When Elijah sent out a message to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored to you and you shall be clean. Verse 11, but Naaman was what? Come on, Florida, shout it. What was he? Furious. He was furious. Why was he furious? He was important. He was a big deal. Do you know who I am? This little maid told me about your little church, your little ministry. I came here with 19 chariots, rolling on 24s, <laughs> got on all my gear. Look at me. Knocks at the door to get his healing because the bridge is out. But then the prophet says, I'm not going to go to the door. See, a lot of times God will cause a prophetic word like this one to kind of scratch you and kind of make you mad. What if he's talking to me? What's he mean? You ought to, John Osteen always said, if, if I'm rubbing the cat the wrong way, just turn the cat around. Because the Lord is trying to speak something through you, not to try to keep anything from you. He wants to fill your cup up and do the things that he did through Joyce Meyer and Rick Shelton and Jack Harris and come on, C.S. Lewis. And, 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 you know, think about all the great people, you know, who are in heaven today. And they took a bunch of people with them. So Elisha won't go to the door, and now this guy's furious. Anybody know why he's mad? Shout it at me. Come on, Florida, anybody? Ego, pride, those are, those are good. I think those are the two that I was looking for, ego and pride. I like the ego one. I didn't think ego. I'm glad we talked. I just thought pride. But I like ego. Because if you're an egomaniac, you'll never be used by God. Because when you step out in faith, it's always a big flipping risk, man. You think about it. You're up on Sunday. Stuff's going fast. I'm on stage. We're going. I wonder if I should preach. There's new people. Address it. It's coming at me quick. And then I can't remember the song I sang, but I got a song from heaven right then. You couldn't put a gun to my head right now, but there was a prophetic song. It hit hot and it hit quick, but I'm saying it at the same speed I'm thinking it while it's coming out of my spirit. And if you got ego and pride, it'll go, oh man, that might not rhyme. That may, might make me look bad. And if you do it in pride, you will fall and you will look bad. But if you do it and the Lord's on you, number one, if you screw it up, you don't rightly care. 
I've never looked in a casket. I've preached a lot of funerals. My dad never would do it. I never looked at a casket, and the guy in the casket looked back at me and said, Psst, is my tie straight? Because <laughs> dead guys don't care. So if you're dead, you don't care. So if it rhymes, it rhymed. If it didn't rhyme, it don't rhyme. If you're a trained professional and you got a mic, at that point you're about to freak out your rhyme, pull it back and fake a cough or do something. Come back when you got something. But there's more ways than one for you to do what you're supposed to do. But if you're prideful and you got ego and you're arrogant, God will never, ever, 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 ever use you. I just promise you he won't. So he goes to the door and he's furious because of his pride. He went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to meet me. He had, he had preconceived ideas how this should be. Stand, call upon the name of the Lord, wave his hand over me and heal my leprosy. That's the way I really wanted this to happen. But instead, he told me to go run down to the river to pier in the smelliest septic part of it. Florida, you don't know anything about this, but the river to pier is basically our intercoastal, <laughs> except it's kind of sewage lagoon. And the preacher says, go jump in the lake seven times. And he went away mad. He said, you know, couldn't he told me to go to the Breakers Hotel? I got money. Doesn't he know who I am? That's exactly why he did it. He knew who you were because the Holy Spirit revealed to him that your pride needed an adjustment for you to do what God calls you to do. And so you had a bridge builder and a gap maker that's speaking directly into your life and you wouldn't listen. You know, look at your neighbor and say, it's tight, but it's right. And I know he's right. Verse 13, and his servants came near, so the staff's coming out of all the other escalades. They're running up to him, trying to calm him down. So my father, respectfully, they're saying, my father, you know, boss, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you have not have done it? Much more. He says, worse and be clean. So he went down after... Everybody tried to deal with him. Everybody begged him. Everybody had to have side hustle meetings about him. Well, you can go talk to him and make sure you say, my Lord, boss, big dog, chief, potentate, reverend, prophet, most holy father. No. Some of the greatest words that I've got that saved my whole ministry came from people that you would have never, ever respected. And I didn't respect them even. I looked at them and thought, now I know, you're, I know they're crazy. I happen to know they're crazy. Anybody ever known people are crazy? Raise your hand. If you, don't, if you didn't raise your hand, I'm assuming you. Crazy. Because God uses crazy people. He just does. He uses good people, sane people, smart people, not so smart people. He just uses, he uses everybody. And I knew my ministry was riding on that word. My proverbial cup needed to move up. And if I didn't move up, he was going to move on. But you know what an honor is? An honor, guys, is to physically own. I own this piece of history. And, and by the way, most people would have thrown it all away. But there was something about me that I'm a little bit of a history kind of guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for I mean, loyalty and, and love. And I've actually been done wrong by some of the people that's been in this seat. But I've never spoke wrong of them, even though they've done me wrong. I've taken proverbial butt chewings. My wife will tell you, they've called me up and ripped me a new one for 20 minutes. And I said, yes, ma'am. Wasn't Joyce Meyer, but somebody else who was grossly offended. But you know what? What you do is you say, I'm just lucky to be here. 
I can't believe I got the job myself. So I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. I'm sure there's a lot of things I can improve on. And when you do that, you don't mind dipping. You don't mind taking the least seat. You don't mind not being asked to preach. You don't mind if you sing or you don't sing. You just go, God, I'm just glad I'm at the table. I might be all the way at the end of the table over here, but I'm eating from the king's table and I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I'm telling you, if you do that, God will use you. He'll blow your mind and you too can change the world. I haven't, but the people sit there sure have. So the way up is actually down. If you find yourself at a table having to tell people about all your opportunities, there won't be a lot of extra opportunities. How many see stuff by some people and I mean, you're not even trying to judge it, you just go, wow, that's pretty arrogant, that's pretty prideful, that's pretty self-absorbed. How many of y'all have seen that? You go, wow, man. Huh. How many, even though you're like, I don't even want to judge that, but just something inside your spirit, your Shonda said, that might not be a good idea. Because we don't want to judge, because you know, the Bible says judge not unless you judge. We have no business judging people, but it's just something in you. And it shouldn't be really us judging them. We should just go, if God ever chooses to use me, what I don't want to do is that. Because people don't need to... People don't need to be impressed by you. They need to be impressed by God. That, you know, my, my pastor, Chris Hodges, he always says that the greatest church service that you probably ever attended, wouldn't, you wouldn't have noticed the person who is leading it. Because God would have been so glorified, you didn't even think about them. You just thought about the Lord. But if you're thinking about yourself all the time, and you're thinking about what you have to say or how you want to do it, you can't be a bridge builder or a gap filler. This little maid, anybody ever seen J-Lo in Maid in Manhattan? Raise your hand if you've seen that movie. If you haven't, go home tonight and watch it. It's a great movie. It'll bless your soul. <laughs> J-Lo's just this little maid. Nobody's really thinking much of her. And then she... Meets Prince Charming and the rest. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's good. So that's what this little maid was. Insignificant. And you might be there now. I just work at Starbucks. I just work at Costco. I just do, I'm a dental hygienist. I'm a whatever. Whatever you are, you're not just a, I'm just a mom. You're not just a, you're right now doing that thing that God has purposed you to do. And it might seem insignificant, but you will be the one that puts the king up to get healing from leprosy to have a story like this. Go ahead and give God some praise tonight. Come on, Tuesday. So you gotta be happy where you are And you have to take real assessments of you. Let's talk about that. The Lord won't let me alone on this. <clears throat> My uncle was a business guy. And um, he was very, very successful at what he did as a contractor. And his wife wanted to keep up with the, her sister. And kept pushing my uncle, pushing my uncle, pushing my uncle to keep up. Why do you think she wanted to keep up and have their house be as big as this house and their pool be as big as this house? What, what do you think that'd be? Give me some words. Comparison, pride, ego. So he's working, 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 working. He can't work hard enough. Now, back when they first fell in love, he just had a three-wheeler. Remember three-wheelers? He didn't have four-wheelers. He just had three. You can kill yourself on those sea bottles. They're very dead. They're cool, but they were dangerous. Three-wheelers. You put your leg down on a three-wheeler, you can lose it. He had a three-wheeler, yellow three-wheeler, Papa wheelies. They were having fun. 
They sat on the couch, watched movies in 1979, 80, 81, 82. They were in love. But now, the original relationship, the purpose of the relationship has went away and now pride and ego is destroying the fabric of his. Men need to feel respected, you don't know this, women, write this down. This will help you get a man. So keep, you, keep a man too. Respected and honored. If they don't feel respected and honored, some other little chick's gonna come up with her eyelashes. <laughs> I sure do respect you. I sure, I sure, what, I'm just so impressed by what you do. And he comes home to you and you're like, you don't work hard enough, you don't. He's like, he still, he closed his eyes while you're yelling and he sees But power and pride and money destroys bridges, blows them up. So then eventually, fast forward, the divorce happens. She said on Facebook and everywhere, my business, my business, my business. I thought, you, you ain't got no business. You don't know how to climb the tree. You don't know how to run the excavators and you don't know 50 to one chainsaws and you don't know how to sharpen a chainsaw. You don't know how to run a chipper and he does. So I'd be careful. Come on, I've been watching Dateline. I, sorry. I'm sorry. I saw, I saw something on Dateline and it came up. I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. I did. I did. But it wasn't long till we saw the gap. He went on to do and be who he was. And she went on to be and do what she was. And she doesn't have the house. She doesn't have the pool. She didn't keep up. Because you never win trying to keep up appearances getting in a real big hurry. At some point, Joyce had to sit here and go, yes, sir, Pastor Rick. No, sir, Pastor Rick. For years and years and years and years. And she's 79, and I've been to Haiti and seen entire subdivisions with concrete homes with a little sign that says, this village was paid for by Joyce Meyer. I've been in third world countries and seen hospitals that said, this hospital was built by Joyce Meyer. And I, I want to let you know that some of you might be new and you're like, oh yeah, but the in Channel 4 and Channel 5 and Channel 2, they proved what a crook she was. You know who's crooks? Channel 4, Channel 2, Channel 5. All crooks, all liars, all fake news. Come on, somebody ought to shout amen. You can just turn it around. And we got to stick up for men and women of God. And if they ever done something for God, you ought to stand up and say, hey, wait a minute. Have you ever built an orphanage? Hey, hey, talk to me a second. You ever put a prosthetic limb on somebody? You got an ambulance? And shut up, go home. And watching your stuff in anyway. So I'm almost done. Luke 16, 10. He who is faithful in what is least, Florida, is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust or crooked or prideful or arrogant in a little bit is gonna be all that and much. So, I'll talk to Florida for a second. There's a little chapel. If you guys turn, you can see them in there. And the little chapel seats about 120 people. And we have a, 
a building on Sunday that I was broadcasting from, the school seats about 800, and then this one here, you know, they have uh, multiple services, Saturday night, a bunch on Sunday, Tuesday night, a radical, cool stuff. And when that building was offered to me, and I have these buildings, my pride said, take the building, but don't post about it. Can I be honest with you? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of bad for your image. It kind of, um, you know, eh, I don't know. And the Lord told me, are you serious? Do you remember? Not in a mean way. It was like, do you remember? It was more like, do you remember that you lived in a little trailer? Do you remember that your family didn't eat some days? Do you remember that your dad would have, he would have given his right arm for a church like this? And here you are right now, seriously. Be careful, son. Man, I posted about that building so quick. I was like, man, bam, check this out. And I kind of, you know, I kind of embellish it. I'm like, hey, we're doing this boutique thing too, you know? And I would always show like our other buildings. I'd be like, we got these buildings and these buildings. And then we do this boutique thing. But I could never really show that one without showing the others. That's ego, it's pride, and it's wrong. And it's, I'm not embarrassed to the people. I love the people. I just, I definitely would want to say, you know, hey, three, eh, eh, eh. you just need to be able to go, yeah, that's, that's our church. So then, you know, the other day when Pastor Chris, you got to remember, Pastor Chris Hodges, my pastor, he pastors the second biggest church in America. So on Easter, they'll have 150,000 butts in the seats. All their campuses. And he called me a couple months ago and said, hey, I want to be in Florida playing golf with John Maxwell. And uh, I'd like to preach for you that weekend. And I'm your pastor. I said, well, sure. And I thought, oh man, maybe I'll preach on Saturday night because it's at the chapel. And then him have, it just crossed my mind. I thought, what are you kidding me? So I said, no, we'd love to have you. So when he came to the chapel, I did not on the way there say, let me start making excuses. See, what happened was, This building was given to me. Anybody, why do I feel so alone up here right now? I just feel, I feel so alone. I feel like, feel like nobody's ever said what happened was. I feel like nobody else got the same ego. Y'all look at me like, I can't even believe I follow a guy like this. This joker got some problems. I, I, I was pulling into the, to the street to make a ride on Royal Palm Way where you guys did tonight. And I thought, I mean, I, Never said a word. Pulled in. He got out. He didn't say a word. Walked past the little, you know, all the cars are parked everywhere. They just, the campus is incredible, man. They parked everywhere tonight. They would have parked in streets, up the road, across the way, double parking. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then you can't even hide it right now because like all our cars are spray painted. So we're obviously jacking people's parking spots. You know, we just, Florida's buck wild like that. So we walked in, man, and we, and we walked past the kids area and I didn't say anything. And we walked in and it's little, but it's packed. There's so much energy, so much anointing. He walked up and he just preached. He never said anything about the crowd. He talked to you guys. We were done. He walked out. He never said anything about the building. I never said anything about the building. And I don't think he was thinking about the building because I wasn't thinking about the building. He was just excited to be with me. And the word went forth. God's will was done. See what I'm saying right now? So quit making excuses. Well, the reason why I'm overweight, the reason why I live in a trailer, the reason why I ain't got a job, the reason, just just don't shut up. I'm almost done. I know I'm nine minutes over, but I I felt like that I needed to, 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 to get this the whole, the whole baby out of me. I was like almost out, but I still like. Somebody help me get this out of here. I'm talking about a horse right now. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about a horse. 
I need to get that video and save myself from, 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 from Tim. Tim was out there last week. Their horse had a baby. and He's, he's got the, the feet of that horse pull out. I'm like, oh my gosh. He didn't have any gloves on. Sonny, he comes shake my hands. I'm like, no, I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. Come on, give me a hug. There you go. Okay. Last but not least, I would encourage you tonight to say, wow, that was a different kind of service. The temptation for me tonight was go, oh man, they're on an adrenaline run from Sunday. I got an incredible organ, like hit me one time with anything. I don't even care what it is, you know? So I can start, I can start rocking out with church and I can start doing what I do. I mean, I, I pay these jokers. They're, I, I'm wasting money right now. I'm losing money because they ain't playing. They're just they're making money and just sitting around like union contractors right now. No, they're incredible, okay? So I was tempted to go do what they, they can do and do what I could do. But this word was so important that God made me have Billy hurt his back and bring this piece of history out to say when Joyce was sitting here, she didn't see the hospitals, biggest buyer of Christian airtime in the world. Just Florida, you don't know this, but just like one mile, when you say two miles up the road, her ministry, enough offices to employ a thousand people, call centers, evangelizing the world from Fenton, Missouri. Florida, this doesn't, doesn't, you don't know this, but this is, this is not a good place. Fenton is not like it's like a rich, wealthy area. And back when she started, it was a dot on a map. And the post office that's there got so many pieces of mail a day, it shut the whole post office down. They had to bring in tractor trailers for her mail. And she changed the world from this pew. But she's not so busy, she can't text me back. Now, if I text her right now, she wouldn't text me because I definitely know she's not watching now because at eight o'clock she goes to bed. She's sleeping right now. Probably an hour and a half ago, she sat down and started watching Jeopardy or Will of Fortune. About four o'clock, she ate dinner with Dave. Dave, let's go eat. Let's go get something to eat. And she ate dinner. And then at, at four in the morning, she'll be up writing. Not busy. Fruitful. So if you're... You're doing it wrong. Calm down. You want to crash an airplane? Do that. You want to crash a motorcycle? Do that. You want to crash your life? Do that. Calm down. If it's God today, it's God tomorrow. They that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. Stand up with me. I feel the Holy Ghost right now here online at home. And here's what I feel the Lord telling me to tell you. For us to take two minutes. If you just kind of close your eyes and they're gonna play like they're playing. And you do a little inner inspection on stuff that maybe the Lord spoke to you during the sermon or even right now he's gonna speak to you some things. You're like, yeah, that's pride. That's ego. I need to take a chill pill on that. So for two minutes, it's 8.10. Actually, 8.11. So let's go for it. Come on, Florida.
we got this building. It was where Dom's at. And these pews were, this pew was there. And um, Rodney Howard Brown was preaching and this church had really declined and there was probably a third as many people less. It was only about a third of what's in here right now there that night. And the service, they asked me to come and we were kind of negotiating on the building. I came, I remember being in the service. I remember it was like 10, 30 or 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> You guys don't even know. That's probably the reason why there's only a 30 the amount of people in the church because church service took a long time. And they got to praying and it kind of felt about like it did right now though. And I, I knew God was in this place. And Dom, I got down finally because it's been so long they prayed about another hour. And I laid on my back there <coughs> and I looked up and I saw the, that ceiling and it was kind of this the insulation was hanging down. It needed painting. I was just looking at it all. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. And he told me several things. And he said, if you'll do these things, I'll give you this building. And I obviously did those things. But now that I look back at it, had I known because we were able to buy the building for 7.7 .7 million, but it took 10 million to fix it up, to redig the well. And if you'd have told me that night when I was flat on my back, it's gonna take 10 million, and God said, I'm gonna give you the building, I would have said, no, thank you. You're not giving me a building, you're putting a boat anchor around my neck. I said that to say this to you. You never ever know what it cost a person to be who they are. You never know. So let's all just to agree to that, that I don't know what it costs Chrissy Pratt to be Chrissy Pratt. I don't know what it costs Doug Pratt to be Doug Pratt. I don't know what it costs Pete and Trudy to be themselves. I don't know. But let's all assume that everybody is doing something that they're called to be doing and none of us have to brag about what we're doing. We can just assume that we're all doing great stuff. And brag on other people. If you wanna, you wanna have friends, tell other people how great the other people are. Talk good about people behind their back. They'll tell them. I was talking good about Pastor Phil at a staff meeting, leadership meeting on Monday. One of our staff members told me later in the day, he said, hey, I recorded that, or at least sent it to Phil. And I thought, that's exactly why I said it. Because I knew somebody would tell him. And he needs to hear it. Pastor Phil's a great man of God, loyal man of God. He doesn't brag about himself. He brag about his kids. He does have some pride with his ball playing kids. But God's working on that. You should be proud of them. But as we get ready to go, how many of y'all feel like though that you, you're like, no, I feel like you're my, my spiritual father and I got a little talking to and I don't feel beat down because that's not my purpose. I want you to feel built up and realize, hey, that's really where I want to go. I want to grow. I want, I want God to use me as a, a gap builder. I want to write the books. I want to start the business. I want to, I want to do more for Jesus. And so, as we do leave, because I know it's late in Florida, Pete and Trudy got to go home and check on the puppies. They just had two golden retrievers that were this big three days ago, and they're this big today. I feel, I feel led of the Lord to just pray for you, our church family. Ferguson, all our family online, on the app, wherever you're at. Holy Ghost, third person of the Godhead, 
the one who is on the inside of each and every one of us. Give us dreams in the night. Speak to us when we wake up in the morning. Let us be watching a movie and know that's not an accident. I know, I know that's God. Uh, hear a song, you go, no, that's totally God. I know it's God again. That is totally God. Yes, I stand corrected. God, get our church ready for the next revival. America's in trouble. People are scared. People are hurting. They're confused. They're about, confused about who they are. They're confused about their sexuality. They're confused about their finances. They're confused. God, you're not confused. Our church isn't confused. We know exactly who we are. And we know the space and place in which you have placed us. God, we honor the past revivals that have taken place in this building, at this location, on these chairs. God, we even pray for Rick and Donna Shelton. God, I, I texted him this week. God, just strengthen them. God, help their bodies, help their church, help their kids, help God, wherever they hurt, God, just, just for what they did build here. God, it would cost $100 million today to build what they built. And, and we're standing on the shoulders of, of spiritual fathers and mothers who, who helped build it. God, we pray for Joyce and Dave Meyer, God, and their family. God, that you strengthen them with good health and wealth and prosperity. And no weapon formed against them will pray prosper, God. We pray for all of our, 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 our network of believers in the household of faith, our church. We pray for our campus pastors, God. We pray for the state of Missouri. We pray for the state of Florida. God, we pray for the nation of Israel today. We call them blessed, God. We bless those that bless Israel. You said you'd do that, God. And God, we just pray for the divided states of America once again to become the United States of America and for God to, to bring a, a revival again in our colleges, in our, in our movie theaters, God, everywhere. God, we we're going to take over. God, use us. We, we're so glad that you picked us to be the people in the last days to do it. God, I thank you for healings, signs, wonders. Limbs will grow out. Deaf ears will be unstopped. Blind eyes will be opened. People that were suicidal, they, they'll no longer be tormented by that. People that were bipolar will be healed. God, I just thank you, Lord, that even this weekend, touch our church and all of our campuses, God. God, I thank you that our dream team comes in early and we anoint our seats. We pray over our parking spots. We pray for where their kids are going to be. God, you said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person would avail much. And tonight, God, we pray, God, God, we pray that we end well. God, we don't want to sabotage our life. We don't want to become fat and successful and think we've got it all together, God. God, we're still the little people who you picked up out of the miry clay. God, I'm still a little homeschooler that somehow you saw fit to use me and all my imperfection and all my sin and all my shortcomings and all of my attitude and all of the pride and ego and vanity and all this stupid stuff that I do, God. Somehow you see past it with your grace and your love and your mercy. And God, you've never condemned me. You never gave up on me. And God, I just rededicate my life tonight in front of our church, in front of our family, God. Not for partial obedience, but total, complete obedience to you and your will. God, I thank you that our feet are anointed, appointed, and qualified. That everything our hand touches turns to good. God, I thank you that our bodies are strengthened, that our minds are sharp, that our tongues are articulate, that we have psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that come up out of here and they touch heaven. God, not so that we can be known, not so people can know this is a great church, but they can know that you're a good God, that you're a loving God, that you're a grace-filled God. God, I call gay people to our church, transgender people to our church, confused people to our church, hurt people to our church, attorneys to our church, Spanish people, Asian people, Latino people, all people and all nations shall come to our church and we will pastor these people and we will love these people and we will never look at people for their outward appearance, but we will see the content and the character of their heart, God. And God, we'll be able to lift up your name and let everybody know that we're all sinners saved by grace. And we're not a perfect church. We are a church performing for one, an audience of one, and that's you, God. God, we want to sing a little louder. We want to jump a little higher. We want to pray a little fervent. God, I want to preach like it's every time, the last time that I'll get to talk to some soul. God, raise us up. God, bring our television ministry up to help people.